I'm going to be talking to you about <clears throat> one of the most evil characters in the Bible. And pretty much about if God will hear this man's prayer, then he will hear your prayer. So this guy, King Manasseh, is one of the most wicked kings that Judah ever had, if not the most wicked. He began to reign at 12 years old and did evil in the sight of the Lord. 2 Chronicles 33, 2. And he did a lot of evil stuff. He observed times, made his son and daughter pass through the fire, built altars for the host of heaven. And, you know, I may have never observed times, made my children pass through the fire, built altars for the host of heaven, or any of the things Manasseh did in Second Chronicles 33. But I've been just as wicked in other ways. And if you're like me, then you probably think, you probably think you're giving Paul a run for his money on being the chief of sinners, as Paul calls himself in 1 Timothy 1.15. But despite me being so evil, and right up there with Manasseh, the Lord has heard my prayers regardless, and Manasseh, he gets in the worst predicament of his life, an enemy captures him, and in this situation, he calls on the Lord. And I want to use his story as an illustration to show you just how great prayer is and how God, if God can hear Manasseh's prayer, then he can hear your prayer. So look at Second Chronicles 33. So in Second Chronicles 33 and verse 12, in Second Chronicles 33 and verse 12, Manasseh's already been taken captive. And it says, And when he was in affliction, he besought the Lord his God and humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers. So it took him getting captured before he finally humbled himself. But nonetheless, he humbled himself. It says he besought the Lord. Manasseh, despite being a wicked man living during the Old Testament, and things were different then too, he still had prayer as a way to God. Manasseh and his people had been dealt with, but they would not hearken. It says in 2 Chronicles 33, 10, The Lord spoke to Manasseh and to his people, but they would not hearken. Wherefore the Lord brought upon them the captains of the host of the king of Assyria, which took Manasseh among the thorns and bound him with fetters and carried him to Babylon. They had been dealt with. Just like the night that you and I got saved, most likely you had been dealt with for a very long time. I'd been dealt with for a very long time. For 21 years, I lived as a lost person who would not hearken to the voice of God, just like Manasseh, just like Judah. So Manasseh, he had to be in a dire situation before he besought the Lord. And the night I called on the Lord for the first time, it took a rough guy preaching a hellfire sermon to get my attention and you probably heard me talk about it before the the sermon was six surprises waiting in hell by danny castle and i had to feel like i was in a danger of doom before i called on the lord even though we aren't saved by repeating a magical prayer or nothing like that the night i got saved i came to god as a guilty sinner and i besought the lord i i called on the name of the lord like it says Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that's what I did. And the Lord heard my prayer, despite how wicked I was and saved me, just like he heard Manasseh's prayer. And I doubt anybody listening to this has done half the stuff that he did. So if he heard his prayer, he'll hear your prayer. So the Lord heard Manasseh's supplication. Second Chronicles thirty three thirteen, and it says, and prayed unto him, and he was entreated of him, and heard his supplication, and brought him again to Jerusalem and to his kingdom. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord, he was God. So it is a mystery how God will listen to me. But Romans ten thirteen says it, for whosoever shall call. That night I got saved, I was so sick of myself, sick of my sin, sick of my depression, 
and felt like I was bathed in filth, literally, but God heard me. My first year of salvation, I was dealing with assurance and begging God to save me every night because I didn't understand salvation. You know, I understood what it took to get saved and believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, but I didn't understand about eternal security or assurance of salvation. So every night I'd, I'd pray God to save me again or something like that. My prayers consisted of begging God to not let me go to hell. I didn't realize I was already sitting in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, as Ephesians 2, 6 says. But all the while, the Lord was probably using my eternal insecurity and lack of Bible knowledge about salvation to get me closer to Him through prayer. So maybe He's doing that to you to get you closer to Him through prayer. So, prayer was present. When I came to God, prayer was present when I need a way to escape. And he heard my prayer when I needed a way to escape after I got saved. You see, Manasseh was bound with fetters and in possession of the enemy. And the only place for Manasseh to turn was God. And there have been plenty of times in my Christian walk where I've got into sin or away from the Lord. But prayer is one of the ways... Of escape. 1 Corinthians 10.13 1 Corinthians 10.13 says, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. I believe prayer is one of those ways of escape. I wonder if Manasseh thought he was too wicked for God to hear him. And that he wouldn't escape. But if he hadn't caught on the Lord, there wouldn't have been any escape. You see, a trick the devil has, and he's always tried to pull on me, is to make me think that God doesn't want me to pray because I'm so wicked. But the truth is that God wants me to pray more than I even want to pray myself. See, I've spent too much time out of prayer because the devil told me the Lord didn't want to talk to me. Just like I've spent too much time out of fellowship with others because I thought I wasn't good enough to talk to them. The thing to do is draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. James 4, 8. God wants to talk to you and hear from you more than you want to hear from him. Prayer is present when you need a way to escape. And, you know, you have not because you ask not. What if Manasseh didn't call on the Lord that day? What if he said, look at all the things I've done. But when he was in affliction, he besought the Lord his God and humbled himself greatly before the Lord God of his fathers. Prayer is present when I need a way to escape. Prayer is present when there's fellowship. When you see Manasseh's life after his prayer, you can see that he has fellowship. After he prayed, the Lord brought him again to Jerusalem into his kingdom. So you see that in 2 Chronicles 33, 13, and prayed unto him, and he was entreated of him, and heard his supplication, and brought him again to Jerusalem into his kingdom. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord, he was God. Now after this, he built a wall without the city of David on the west side of Gihon in the valley, even to the entering in at the fish gate, and compassed about Ophel, and raised it up a, great, a very great height, and put captains of war in all the fenced cities of Judah. And he took away the strange gods and the idol out of the house of the Lord, and all the altars that he had built in the mount of the house of the Lord and in Jerusalem, and cast them out of the city. And he repaired the altar of the Lord and sacrificed thereon peace offerings and thank offerings and commanded Judah to serve the Lord God of Israel. Nevertheless, the people did sacrifice still in the high places, yet unto the Lord their God only. Now the rest of the acts of Manasseh and his prayer unto his God and the words of the seers that spake to him in the name of the Lord God of Israel, behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel. His prayer also and how God was entreated of him and all his sin and his trespass, and the places wherein he built high places and set up groves and graven images 
before he was humbled. Behold, they are written among the sayings of the seers. So Manasseh slept with his fathers, and they buried him in his own house, and Am Ammon his son reigned in his stead. So you see, after his prayer, he was in fellowship. Prayer is present when there's fellowship. The Lord brought him again to Jerusalem into his kingdom, got him out of that situation. When I finally besought the Lord to get back into fellowship, he didn't turn me away. He brought me into fellowship again. And keep in mind that Manasseh has been living like the devil for years, and God still heard him for a long time. See, I thought that I would... I would have to regain fellowship with God by consistently living right again for, you know, an extended period of time before I could get back in fellowship. But prayer is the way back into fellowship. You see, the mo you, you could be living horribly. But the moment you turn to God in prayer from a sincere heart, you're right back into fellowship. And fellowship is not salvation. You know, you can be saved and not have fellowship. And see... Prayer is like the comfort of seeing your father's arms open and ready to receive you because his love is unconditional even when you no longer feel worthy to be called his son. Just like the, the prodigal son. Just like in Luke fifteen twenty one, And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But you were never worthy anyway. It's about the you got saved. God gave you the imputed righteousness of Jesus Christ. That's why you're worthy to be called a son. It didn't have nothing to do with anything you did do, would do, could do, or ever will do. It's all about the Lord Jesus Christ. He's worthy, and since you're in him, you're always worthy to be called a son. So when I feel like I'm, I'm too wicked to talk to God in prayer, I'm reminded of 1 John 3.20, for if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. So the proof that God is hearing my prayers is through Him answering them. 1 John five fourteen. This is the confidence that we have in Him that if we ask anything according to His will, He heareth us. And <clears throat> Manasseh's life seemed to glorify God all the way around after he prayed. He got rid of all that stuff as we just read. And for years I prayed the Lord would lead me to a job where I could study as I worked and think on the things of the Lord while I labored. I got that prayer answered. I'm able to spend almost the entirety of my shift. Although it's hard work, I got headphones. I can listen to preaching and teaching. I can study the Bible on breaks. I, I got all kinds of time to just listen to the Word of God, stay in close fellowship. That's one of the greatest prayers I've had answered. I've had so many answered prayers, even though I'm like Manasseh. I'm wicked as all get out. I've done horrible things. I've done horrible things even after I was saved. But it's not about me. You see, God just wants you to humble yourself and come to Him. And then try to live for Him. You see, Manasseh didn't take advantage of the, of the prayer either. You see, you know, he, he did live like the devil before the prayer, but then he humbled himself and prayed, and God got him out of that situation. You see, he could have went back to living like he did before and say, well, if I get in that situation again, I'll just pray again, and God will get me out of that situation again. But he didn't do that. After God got him out of the situation, he didn't take advantage of it. He showed the appreciation, and he started living for God. See, Manasseh... Manasseh had the words of the seers that spake to him in 2 Chronicles 33, 18. And like him, I, I need someone to preach to me. And for years, I've prayed that the Lord would continue to lead me to different Bible teachers and, and preachers and pastors who would take me to more growth in the Lord. Exactly what happened with Manasseh. In 2 Chronicles 33, 14, 17. You can see a growth in the Lord. He's got he's listening to them seers. The seers like prophets, the preachers, giving him the word of the Lord. You you need a preacher. 
to give you the word of the Lord, make you grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, just like Peter talks about. You know, I would I would always pray for that. You see, it started with me. I was, when I got saved, I started listening to Danny Castle, and I listened to him preach for about 8 to 10 hours a day, depending on whenever I got off at work, worked in this real just hardcore furniture factory. It was hot, dirty, got sawed, ruined my car with sawdust, ruined my clothes, my shoes. You know, everything was ruined there. Just a, it was just a mess. I'd have sawdust in my eyeballs, all in my shoes, be splinters stabbing me. <clears throat> I would never take a break. I'd just work straight through the, because you're making production, so I would never take a break. I'd just work straight through the shift, whether it be 8 to 10, 11 hours. But the entire time, I would listen to preaching. I had thousands of his sermons I downloaded. I would just listen to his preaching for 8 to 10 hours a day. And that, as a new Christian, that really helped beat down my flesh. You see, I bet Manasseh, I bet for him it wasn't just something where he just automatically was just able to just get rid of all this sin right away. He, he His flesh had to be worked on, I'm sure. And my flesh had to be worked on. You know, just listening to doing that hard job, getting up early every day, driving an hour just to get to work, and then doing that hard job every day, beating the flesh down, and then you got to drive all the way back home while you're tired, and then you listen to preaching on the way home, <clears throat> and then you finally get home and it's almost dark, and then you're just preparing for the next day. And that working... Listening to preaching will beat your flesh down. I highly recommend both. And that's what Manasseh did. He, You see, he instantly got to work. He kept himself busy. He started repairing things. He started fixing up things. He started listening to the seers. But with me, it started with me, you know, just doing hard work and uh, listening to Danny Castle. Then I heard Danny talk about Peter Ruckman. So that... That led me to Peter Ruckman, and he gave me a love for the Bible that I never had before. And I just, once I, I listened to him for hours and hours and hours at work, I got as many of his commentaries, I got his, the Ruckman reference Bible, I got all that stuff. That gave me a love for the Bible that I never had before. So after that, I'm like, it's like God keep kept sending me men to help me grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So then, I started listening to, I feel like the Lord led me to David Hoffman. I started listening to him. That, that gave me my love for the verse-by-verse -verse studies that you see I always do on here. And that's my, like, my favorite thing, as you can probably tell. And that gave me a love for that. So I started, uh, I bought the Common Man's Reference Bible. And I like that. I prefer that above the Ruckman Reference Bible. I know that makes a lot of people mad. But it's just got the, the references in that. It's just got tons on every page. And that, that helped me grow. Just looking at those references. It may not have as many notes. But them references, it's just... You could spend hours and hours and hours just looking up all them references he's got in there. And then, after that, the Lord led me to Bob Alexander. That gave me a whole new level of love for the Bible that I never had before. And he, he helped me get my Bible together. Now, I, I, I knew a lot of Bible facts from listening to uh, Danny and Ruckman and Hoffman. And I knew a lot of verse-by-verse -verse studies, and uh, that was my main thing. But then, <clears throat> when I found Bob Alexander, that helped me get my Bible together. And I just kept praying, God, give me, send me somebody else that'll help me grow more. And <clears throat> in the midst of all this, I was going to my, the local church I go to, and my pastor, Donnie Dalton, he to, took me to places I'd never been before in my spiritual life. Just other ways of thinking, 
He helped me grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But you see, Manasseh, just like him, you got to, don't just take advantage of the prayer, of the, of the power of prayer. Look what he did. He took away the strange God. Verse 15, he took away the strange God, God's. And the idol out of the house of the Lord. And all the altars that he had built in the mount of the house of the Lord. And in Jerusalem. And cast them out of the city. And repaired the altar of the Lord. And sacrificed their own peace offerings and thank offerings. And commanded Judah to serve the Lord God of Israel. You see that? He didn't just take advantage of the prayer. He listened to the seers. And that's what you got to do. You got to find a Bible believing guy. Find a Bible-believing pastor. Listen to him. He'll help you grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And you'll just keep growing and growing. You see? Now the rest of the Acts, Second Chronicles 33, 18, the rest of the Acts of Manasseh in his prayer unto his God and the words of the seers that spake to him in the name of the Lord God of Israel. Behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel. So you see? He listened to those seers, those prophets, those preachers. So, prayer, it's been present in my life. Anytime I did anything that was worth something, I prayed the night I believed on Jesus Christ. I pray when I need a way to escape the temptations and the grip of spiritual wickedness in high places. I've kept a prayer life to keep in fellowship. Imagine if Manasseh didn't humble himself and hadn't besought the Lord. The story would have been completely different. Prayer changes things. And if God can hear Manasseh's prayer, then he can hear your prayer.